Hello, I am John Sampin, Distinguished Artist Professor at Bowling Green State University. Today, I wish to share with you some ideas about the art of musical phrasing. Before addressing this topic, let's first consider the many necessary components for a successful performance. As performers, we must constantly think about technique, rhythm, intonation, ensemble, tone, dynamics, and many, many other features. All of these elements at any time can misfunction. So as musicians, we must also be skilled mechanics in preparing and maintaining these multiple layers. Musical performance is a dangerous profession. With so many potential problems, it's easy to forget about the importance of music phrasing and form. This is just as essential as playing the correct pitches and rhythm. So today, let's consider the aspects of phrase relationships by using the lovely second movement of Paul Creston's Sonata. If you are a classical saxophonist, you will have already played this piece, or if not, you will be playing this sometime in the future. It's one of our staples in our literature. I'll be demonstrating on my Selmer saxophone. For more than 100 years, Selmer has produced wonderful instruments, but this new Selmer Supreme model is special with its wonderful intonation response and warmth of tone. In playing the beautiful opening of Creston's second movement, one could imagine many images or emotions. Perhaps we could be thinking about a sunrise or a religious experience or a lament. Our choice sets the stage for the entire movement. Here, are the first two phrases. In my teaching, I often talk about relationships between the written word and music. We can think of these short phrases as a sentence within a paragraph, which resides in a chapter of a book, or in this case, in a section of the entire movement of a piece. Of course, every composition and every book is constructed differently, but the Creston Sonata is a good example for our consideration today. Let's start with musical paragraphs within the entire chapter or movement. Melody, repetition, and dynamics all help define where these paragraphs occur. For his tranquility movement, Creston opens with this soft little melody which we've just heard. Within the first paragraph are several more musical sentences. We'll return to those in just a moment. The next paragraph or entrance of the melody appears at a higher pitch level and perhaps could be performed at a slightly stronger volume. This prepares for the eventual development of his loud climax. And we can notice how Creston continues to use fragments of his little melody in reaching his climactic fortissimo. Then, after a short piano interlude, the final melodic statement returns, again in a new key center.
Each large section or paragraph has its own general character. We can notice also that Creston has not given us a lot of help with dynamics. He tells us at the beginning that we should be piano. The second statement, the second melodic statement, piano. And that final paragraph or final statement, piano. I think we need to consider different gradations of piano, different softs. There can be many of them. And the first one probably would be very soft, the second one, second entrance a little bit louder, and then the third one very relaxed and calm and serene or tranquil. These paragraphs represent the large, broad sections, but we can also look at the individual lines and statements. In each musical sentence, there may be punctuation to help the listener understand the form of the phrase and to recognize the pairings within the line. I have heard many young students who forget about where to breathe, they breathe whenever they're out of air. And the line doesn't work, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> So absolutely, we would not do that. We want to think about breathing where the sentence ends. The punctuation within these phrases, sometimes we will add a little bit of a lift. In the same way that when we're speaking, we might put a comma here, and then we would continue our sentence. So think about how, again, how literature and how written word might be used in helping express music. Dynamics, adding little dynamic nuances between smaller phrases uh, will help create, create the interest and the, uh, the expression which Creston has, has asked us to do. So, the overall understanding of musical form and repetition is essential in preparing for any performance. As we continue our own saxophone lives, may we always seek beautiful and poetic phrase relationships in this most dangerous but exciting world of saxophone performance. Thank you.